It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. In sticking with the list theme that we have going this week, someone sent in a request and asked me to review an article. Now, this article was published in June of 2020 by Mira Patel. And it says it's the top five tips to creating a meaningful product roadmap. So we're going to look at these five tips for roadmapping and see what we can make heads or tails out of it. So right at the top, number one, she says, identify and involve the correct stakeholders. Bravo. This ties directly into our rats podcast, right? Your product isn't being created in a vacuum. Remember and communicate that the roadmap is constantly evolving. Having the right people involved at each stage is crucial to building credibility and ensuring end users will actually like and use your product. There you have it. So I think that was pretty straightforward. We want to make sure we involve and identify who the correct stakeholders are. Now, in my advanced product ownership course, one of the things that I teach is that you should also make sure you differentiate between who is a stakeholder, who is a key stakeholder, and who's only an interested party. Because stakeholders often come and go, but key stakeholders stick around for the long haul. And of course, interested parties are just people who have some interest in knowing what you're building, but they don't necessarily have any skin in the game. Coming at number two, tie every piece of what you're doing to the long-term vision and strategy. You want to make sure that your product vision and strategy is aligned to the strategic value and strategy of the organization. It's one of those things where if you're building something and it could potentially take years to build, you want to make sure that you have small incremental releases, that you can show improvement each step along the way. But you also want to make sure that it's in line with what your strategy is. Because sometimes what I found is that the strategy changes. Uh, Oftentimes you'll start with one strategy in mind, and then over time you'll discover that the strategy might have to shift to accommodate a new consumer or a new stakeholder. Or that the things that you're building aren't necessarily still in line with with what we originally thought was our goal. So we need to make updates and make sure that we're constantly looking at the uh, roadmap as something that's both evolutionary and revolutionary. I tell people you should always plan your roadmap for, you know, uh, the first quarter out, maybe another quarter out from there. But you don't want to go too far out because once you get beyond six months, it's usually pie in the sky anyway. Okay, number three, design to scale logically. Now, this one I think might be a, a hiccup. Your purpose is to deliver a product that furthers your company's mission and credibility. To do this, you'll likely need to map out a customer journey to identify milestones that will best implement a strategy. So far, so good. These milestones used to be at the right level of granularity, and you should work, or these milestones need to be at the right level of granularity, and you should work with your stakeholders from the top to make sure that you're covering the correct scope. I love it. One of the things I see often now is scaling is often brought up at the roadmap level. And this is a place where we should talk about scaling, but in terms of scaling back, scaling down, not trying to do everything at once, learning about limiting WIP. And I think that if you apply those principles, then number three makes a whole lot of sense. All right, number four, create a clear and concise visual interpretation. I like that because what I can tell you is a picture is worth a thousand words. And some of the best roadmaps in the world I've seen have been very visual. One of the tools I see commonly used today for road mapping is either uh, either Mural or Miro, where people are laying out their roadmaps there. A lot of people are still laying out their roadmaps in Jira and in other tools. But what I can tell you is that there's no one-size-fits-all solution. I think the key here is to make sure that we understand how the epic level things in our roadmap tied to the features and how our features tie to stories and how our stories, or if your features are stories, how they attach to sub subtasks. But I think you just need to know how that taxonomy flows and everything needs to be clear, concise, and visual. And this is where I remember uh, the invest model, right? This is where I start thinking about things need to be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, sized appropriately and testable. Uh, Bill Wade got that right. We need to make sure that we apply that here. And of course, number five, which I think might have been my number one, communicate, communicate, communicate. You want to make sure that as a product owner, that you're the ultimate communicator and that this roadmap is disseminated correctly, that everyone who needs to know about it knows about it. 
that everybody's on the same page, that teams understand what's coming down the pipeline, and that everyone understands what our goal is and what we're building towards. So I think this top five list is good. Congratulations, Mira. Overall, I'm happy with the way you pieced this together. And I'll be dropping a link to this post down in my uh, description. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you have a topic you want us to cover or an article you want us to review, reach out. Learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to accommodate you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.